All right, uh, so we do have a newly formed tropical depression, TD9, uh, in the Caribbean Sea. Uh, as far as what's changed over the last 12 to 24 hours, we've got more model agreement now suggesting a Louisiana landfall. Uh, this time yesterday, a lot of uncertainty really anywhere from uh, Texas coast over to uh, Louisiana, uh, but there is more agreement now in a Louisiana uh, track. Uh, but there is still some uncertainty as the storm is just forming now. Kind of the uh, overview here, uh, weather satellite, as I said, is showing formation of that tropical depression nine and the National Hurricane Center is starting advisories on that system. Uh, as I said, there's more clustering of the, the track guidance toward Louisiana coast. Uh, with landfall late Sunday or Monday, possibly as a major hurricane, which would be category three or higher. For Southeast Texas, this track would mean less severe impacts than with more of a direct hit. Uh, we would still be looking at elevated seas, tides, rip currents, and maybe some minor coastal flooding. Uh, but there is still some uncertainty uh, as the system is still forming, so we uh, we still want to monitor and uh, be prepared should it shift a little bit more to the left. Here's a look at the satellite. You can see a little bit better organization there in the Caribbean. That's our Tropical Depression 9. Would be named Ida. Uh, may happen even uh, later today uh, as that system gets its act together and then tracks off to the north, toward the northwest. Here's a look at the uh, wind probabilities, the uh, basically showing the, the the track of the storm off to the northwest uh, and the timing as well. And you can see the the arrival of tropical storm force winds along the Louisiana and still possibly Texas coast Sunday evening. Typically, with these wind probability graphics, they become a little more focused as time goes on. So. Uh, we'll be looking at trends in these probabilities as we go forward. It's possible the numbers you see there in Texas will uh, start to come down as we gain more confidence in the track. Uh, but it does give you an idea of the timing there of the arrival of tropical storm force winds being Sunday evening. Of course, now we're, we're late Thursday morning, so it gives you an idea of uh, essentially the H hour uh, you know, being on the order of 80 uh, four hours or so, if I've got my math right there. Looking at 58 mile per hour and tropical storm force wind speeds, uh, again, you see the focus is more on Louisiana. That's where the highest values are. Uh, but on the wings of that, you can see some uh, some small but, but non-zero uh, probabilities into especially East Texas. Uh, but even some low values for 58 mile per hour winds all the way to Galveston Bay. Again, we look for these uh, values. We look at trends going forward, see if it becomes more focused on Louisiana uh, or if those low probabilities stay up for East Texas. Uh, we can use the 58 mile per hour wind speed probabilities sort of as a proxy for damaging winds. Uh, and then the hurricane force wind probabilities you see there as well. As far as rainfall, a track to the east would keep the heaviest rain, uh, the highest rainfall amounts over Louisiana and a little bit east of there, uh, Mississippi into Alabama. Um, we're, we're still looking at one to three inches of rain along our coastal areas and mainly an inch or less inland just from more uh, ordinary thunderstorm development uh, with some sort of deep tropical moisture that we have in place now. Uh, so again, the, the, the more significant rainfall and flood impacts would be taken east of the area with that more eastern track. A quick look at tides. Uh, what, what do we see here? Well, we see observed high and low tides uh, with the, the red line left of the red bar. And to the right, this is a forecast uh, based on a uh, tide model. And so you can see. Uh, Pretty modest high and low tides until we get into the day on Sunday, but especially Sunday night. Now notice the large gray area. That's a range of possibilities based on 
different tracks of the storm. If the storm were to track toward Louisiana, which is what we think now, uh, you would see values closer to that black line in the center, uh, maybe three, a little bit above three feet above mean lower low water. When you add the influence of the surf and the swell coming in, that could still give you some minor coastal flooding uh, along the beaches. Now notice the peak values there up closer four to five, that's based on a storm tracking more toward Texas. So the way to read this slide is tidal impacts starting probably Sunday night, uh, but probably leading to more minor coastal flooding unless the storm were to track closer to us, in which case the values would be much higher. So that's kind of how to read this slide at this point. As far as marine impacts, in general, looking at six foot plus seas coming into the near shore waters, even for Texas, uh, late Sunday, too early to say where those peak seas will be, uh, 15 to 20 feet plus near the center and little to the right of the track. And so right now that's looking more likely for the Louisiana coastal waters. Uh, and then looking at improvement as we get to Tuesday and Wednesday. Again, should the storm track more toward Texas, we'd be looking at those values uh, as well. Uh, as we, we already talked about the arrival of tropical storm force winds looking at Sunday evening, most likely for Louisiana, Louisiana and Texas. And then hurricane force winds, more likely for Louisiana waters, uh, Sunday night into Monday. And then improvement in the marine area as we get to Tuesday and Wednesday. And we just addressed the, uh, the, the possibility of some surge in minor coastal flooding, very severe surge uh, near and to the right of the center track. But for Texas, should that east track hold, uh, the, the coastal flooding would be relatively minor. Uh, plus, we are looking at uh, rip currents. Even if the storm stays east, um, there is that increasing surf and rip current threat. We've had several east tracking storms last year. So we all know that uh, even if the storm does track east of us, we can get those impacts at the coast. So key takeaways, uh, Hurricane Center starting advisories on TD9. Uh, this may become Ida even later today. Right now forecast for a Louisiana landfall in that uh, three to four day time period. For Southeast Texas, this would mean less severe impacts. Uh, but we're still looking at a minimum at elevated seas, tides, and rip currents. And if the storm were to shift even a little bit left, we could be looking at some winds as well. Um, minor coastal flooding possible based on this. Still some uncertainty, much less than yesterday, but there is still some. So we still need to monitor. And uh, we would, we would uh, characterize this as sort of a medium confidence forecast at this point. Certainly was low confidence yesterday. Uh, we're up to medium now as far as the track goes, as the storm is still getting its act together. We do plan another webinar tomorrow morning just to check in and to see if there are any changes. Uh, we'll do, if it looks like Texas impacts will be minimal, this would be our last webinar tomorrow, uh, but we will add additional if it looks like the storm is heading more our way uh, and, and we are expecting impacts. So that's our plan now. Uh, we'll also, I'll uh, be sending out emailed updates uh, in between now and the next webinar briefing at 10.30 tomorrow.